If there's one thing I've got to do before I die, it is that I have to go to Chenzhou. Chenzhou is an amazing city. The old architecture is still preserved and the old ways are still preserved. Another thing I have to do before I die is teach my friend Adam to learn Chinese. Uncle Hans! Oh yeah, Adam, how are you doing? What do you think of the place? Oh, I, I think it's a really interesting city. People yeah. are nice. It's a nice city. Yeah, this city was very hot in the old days, about a thousand years ago during the Yuan and Song dynasties. And uh, there were people from all over the world who came here. They spoke a hundred languages and from about 98 countries. And they had many beliefs and it also influenced the architecture to a huge degree. Well, I guess the character I should be focusing on here is Zhu, right? Uh, yeah, Zhu. It means to live. In particular, it means where you live. So let's uh, take a look at how people live in this amazing place. If you really want to understand how life is in Chenzhou, you need to come to Xijie, which means the West Street. In this old street, we have a Buddhist temple, a Christian church, a mosque, and a Guanyue temple, all adjacent to each other, which shows that this place is very tolerant. Adam and I met on West Street in Quanzhou, a street that retains many of the traditional buildings of the past. There are many shops. Almost everyone has an electric bike, so the scene on the street is very hectic. In order to better understand Quanzhou, we found Zheng Guoheng. He has lived here for 20 years and will explain some architectural features to us. First, we walked into a traditional house on West Street. You see, we have we see a lot of birds here. Do you know what they are? What? We see a lot of birds. Oh yes. Oh, these are swallows. Swallows, yes. They're swallows, and very interesting, very interesting feature of Chanzo's houses is that at the roof ridge, at oh. the end of the roof ridge. Oh. Yeah, swallowtail. Swallowtail. So that, that's part of the architecture, you're saying? And part of yeah. the architecture, I will show you later. Okay, great. And this swallowtails, you know, it, it has a metaphor. Mm -hmm. The metaphor, it means that um, it represents home. It mm -hmm. represents a nest. Oh. Aww. That always expecting the family member to be re reunited. Oh. It's always coming back. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting time in this world because I haven't been, you know, I haven't seen my family in, since um, 2019 at this point, and not because I don't love them or anything. It's just I can't get back home, get back to my Gushong. Yeah, it's a it's a nice image though. The, it's the little swallow wants to go home. <laughs> it's extremely different, absolutely extremely different now because throughout all of history, in 2000, I had left my home. Mm -hmm. I had graduated for 40, uh, let's see, 30 years. And I had lost all contact with Medford. But because of the internet, I regained contact with all the people, with, with many of my uh, childhood friends. This would have been impossible yeah. in any time in history, right. except for the past 20 years. Mm. And so the people here, you know, they go off to the Philippines, they come back 50 years later, there's a famous Chinese poem in Cantonese. Xu Xu Lei Ga Lou Dai Wei Hong Yang Mo Gai Bin Mo Choi Yi Tong Song Gin Bok Song Sik Xu Man Ho Chong Ho Chu Lai. It means when he was young, mm. and he comes back to his hometown, and his hair has turned white, but the people, the children in the town, run around and they say, "Who is this stranger?" The language has not changed, but the people don't recognize him. So this is the way it was was for thousands of years. You're right. Yeah. If I translate from Cantonese, to, I have to think about it in Mandarin. Xiao Xiao Li Jia. Lao Da Hui. Lao Da Hui. Wu Gai Bian Mao Cui. Bian Mao Cui. Er Tong Xiang Jin Bu Xiang Shi. Bu Xiang Shi. Yeah. Right. That's amazing that you recite it in Cantonese. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Making me homesick a little bit. That's that's what I, the, the poem really touched touched me. After visiting some local dwellings, 
we happened upon some local performers of traditional Minnan music called Naning. They were playing in a small open front stall facing the street with several dozen chairs on the street and many people watching. It is hard to find Naning anymore. It reminded me of when I first heard it 50 years ago. Naning is sung and played using original Chinese pentatonic music scale. It is sung in Minnan dialect, which is spoken in Taiwan and southern Fujian. Before the 1920s, Naning was mainly sung by the blind. In Quanzhou, there are still many people who appreciate the old form of music. After watching the Nanying performance, we decided to go to a fishing port a hundred kilometers away. You should know that the coastal city of Quanzhou has a long and winding coastline, and the sea is covered with thousands of boats. We met Mr. Tsai, a local fisherman who has been working the sea for 20 years. He decided to take us out to sea. But before going out to sea, he took us to a temple. We burned incense and knelt in front of the gods and asked them for protection on our trip out to sea. We bowed three times and raised the incense to the gods. Now we will be safe. Mr. Tsai, he has spent half of his life on the sea. When you go to sleep, is the door open or door closed? The cabins they lived in were very small and the aisles were very narrow. They could only accommodate one person. On the side were small beds with sliding doors. The doors were to keep out the sound. The kitchen is also very simple, and they usually just cooked some vegetables and seafood. Mr. Tsai takes the sea as his home most of the time. They work very hard. They often go out for long periods and it can be very dangerous. They sometimes encounter typhoons and are never sure what they will face. He told us that he missed his home on land when he was at sea, and he missed the sea when he was at home. There's a song in Chinese. It roughly translates, if you strive, then you will win. This song from the 1980s embodies the spirit of the Mingnan people who love to fight and inspires people not to be afraid and to move forward bravely even if they encounter difficulties. <laughs> Mr. Tsai sang this song for us. Its lyrics are to the effect, Life is like waves on a sea. Sometimes it raises and falls, sometimes good luck, sometimes bad luck. The most important thing is to love to fight to win. The people of Quanzhou understand this, and although they may go far, they always return home, and their home represents everything, the entire world. In the ancient and modern form of the character Jia, meaning home, we can see what appears to be a pig inside a house. Ancient Chinese lived in houses off the ground, and the pigs lived under the house. So this is the origin of the character meaning house, family, and home.
It happened to be the birthday of Mr. Tsai's daughter. Mr. Tsai took us to his home. His daughter was very nice. We celebrated her birthday. When we saw the whole family being happy together, I understood the definition of home. What is a home? What is the difference between a home and a house? Some of us are destined to live in great mansions. Some of us are destined to live in poor conditions. But it's not the conditions that we live in. It is the people we live with. It is the family, it is the friends that make life worth living. It is the family, it is the friends that make a house a home. As we journey around China, we come to Chengdu, Sichuan to experience the charm of this global food capital. So, what kind of food do you like, Adam? Ah, washer wine lada. This is Chengdu, Sichuan, which is famous worldwide for its uh, various kinds of food. So maybe one of the goals, you could help me to get better at ordering food, because uh, I want to try all sorts of delicious things here. But even more so, maybe I'll have what I'd really like to do is learn how to cook this stuff. My wife loves spicy food, and if I can cook a couple of, maybe just one Sichuan dish, I know she'll never leave me. I'll save my marriage. Okay, I'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to get your points with your wife. All right, deal. The first stop, we come to People's Park around 9 a.m. in the morning. There were more and more people in the park. The park was full of tables and chairs. Teapots and tea sets were on the tables. Most people were leisurely drinking tea, reading the newspaper, playing cards. Their way of drinking tea is unique. They have a large thermos that keeps refilling the cup. There are saucers under the teacup, and there is a lid on the top of the teacup. When drinking, you need to use the lid to constantly block the tea leaves from getting into your mouth. We also did ear cleaning. This is very popular in Sichuan. People use it as a way to relax. They will use professional ear cleaning tools to clean your ears. I can't stand it. Are you nervous? How you doing, Uncle Hamza? So far, okay. <laughs> oh my God. I've never seen anybody paid to clean ears. I did not like the idea of having somebody clean my ears. I cleaned them myself. I am afraid they might poke out my eardrum. But this is kind of a special thing. I don't think they really cleaned my ears. They like tickled my ears and put a tuning fork next to it and made it sound amusing. This is also my first impression of Chengdu. The people here seem to live a very leisurely life, which is different from the feeling of Beijing and Shanghai. But let's get back to the food. If you want to really feel the soul and taste of local Sichuan cuisine, you must have a special sauce. Pixian Doubanjiang. The sauce is very popular in the United States. Eating Sichuan bean sauce is a gourmet delight for many Americans. Today, we finally have the opportunity to come to Pixian, the largest producer of bean sauce in China, the soul of Sichuan cuisine. Pi County is located on the outskirts of Chengdu. It is located in a Sichuan cuisine industrial park. When we came to the factory, we went up on the roof and saw nearly 4,000 vats of bean paste in a drying area. It smelled like urine at first. Then I realized it wasn't a urine smell. After a while, it smelled good. There were these large pots which contained a mixture of beans and hot sauce and other things. Then Mr. Lee came. I asked questions about it and found that they had to be stirred in a daily basis, continuously 
for two to six years. And all this time, they were allowed to ferment and bask in the sun and are continually remoisturized. This is one plus years. It looks like this. Whoa. This is a new <laughs> it's an interesting process. When you see how things are made, you get a better appreciation for it. This work is very exhausting. <clears throat> Master Li has been making doubanjiang for 30 years. He has completely mastered the secrets of Pijian doubanjiang. My question is, why do you have to do it this traditional way? I'm sure there are, is a machine that could do this. They have a modern factory to make things easier. But the handmade version gives off stronger soy sauce aroma. Ah. After three to five years of fermentation, exposure to the sun, and moisture, the color and fragrance is finely perfected. After learning the secrets of the doban sauce, my partner Adam is very happy, but this is just the beginning. We have found a local chef, Master Hu. He is a top Sichuan chef. He will teach us how to make two well-known Chinese dishes, gongbao chicken and mapo dofu. In the kitchen, we have several different cooking places, and the head chef stands in the middle and shows us step by step how to cook everything. Actually, I can make mapu dofu myself, but usually it's very simple. I just toss in some dofu and some spices and heat it up. It still tastes good, but not as good as what we made today. We have the character for kitchen. It's pronounced chu. And on the top you have a guang, which is actually indicates a that it's a building. We belong in the chu. Uh, we belong in the we chu. The yeah, chu yeah, we're, chu -chu. we're chu experts. To learn more about Sichuan cuisine, we decided to visit a more traditional restaurant where the cooking is said to be very special. Uh, the local chef, Mr. Zhang Yunfu, presented us with a manhan feast. The meal is a strict process. First came the cold dishes, then the hot dishes and then snacks and desserts. I asked Zhang Yanfu what the secret of making Sichuan cuisine is. He told us that the first is the spices, and the other is the main ingredients. Take care of these two and leave the rest to time. What impressed me most was the unusual chicken dish. The taste of this dish was very complex. After eating it, it was spicy at first, then bitter, then sweet, then fresh. Chef Zhang told me that this was a characteristic of Sichuan cuisine, a strange combination of flavors. Delicious, how mm. sure. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uncle Hansa, can you tell us about, I don't know, the derivative of... Well, chur is a modification of qi. It's a ko, and on the front side is like a qi. A qi means air, like smell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have a ko and a wei dao. So it's basically what you put in your mouth and what you smell. Okay. Uh, and the other word is ping, which is actually three uh, mouths. See, you never ping alone. Is that yeah, the idea? Yeah, you always never ping, ping as, a, as, a, as a group. Yeah. yeah, and so it uh, can be interpreted, well, the chur is just to fill your stomach. Just, yeah. And the ping is when you're eating something very fancy. Uh, and you're to enjoying it. You're tasting something. Uh, having... But my friends say that I can't ping 
a McDonald's hamburger. It, it seems like it goes, the ping goes beyond just the food. It goes beyond the setup, the, the environment even, you could say. Uh, yeah. And, um, but sure, it's just like, put it in my food hole, right? The, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> After tasting food the whole day, we decided to take a look at some Sichuan opera. It is full of life compared to other Chinese operas. <laughs> Mr. Hu is over 50, but his body is straight and his eyes are full of life. He taught us how to walk with firm steps, firm eyes, and steady breath. In addition to firm movements, the most important thing is inner peace. <laughs> this trip to Chengdu is like a dream trip. Authentic Sichuan cuisine is like a roller coaster of hot and ma, sweet and sour. In fact, food is like life. There are ups and downs, sorrows and joy. The most important thing is to slow down and learn to live. There is a proverb about Hangzhou, China. I traveled a thousand miles to Hangzhou. Half of the reason was to see West Lake. The other half was to see the silk. Hangzhou is the hometown of silk. The silk market here is the first of its kind in China, and its products are exported all over the world. We came to a famous street in Hangzhou city. The street is full of shops selling silk clothes. On this street, there hide many distinguished people. We found expert seamstress Zhang Ming in a humble shop. Silk pajama shop. We picked two beautiful pieces of clothing in this store and decided to ask Zhang Ming to make them for us. We witnessed the process of her making clothes for us. She took a ruler and first used chalk on a piece of silk to draw the lines and start cutting. That reminded me of my mother, who made almost all of my clothes when I was a child. In the process of making it, Chang Ming told me that there is a big difference between Chinese style clothing and Western style clothing. There are four major families of silk and satin in China, while in Western style clothing, fabrics are generally made of chemically produced fibers. There are also many differences in the production process. Chang Ming also told me that the most important thing in making clothes is to be calm. You have to really calm down. The heart must be quiet, and you must love what you are doing. But also, follow the trend and fashion, and also, keep learning. Zhang Ming was born into a family of tailors. She started making clothes with her father at the age of eight. She has a love and obsession for Chinese-style garment making. She said that only when she is making clothes does she feel real happiness. I was impressed by her worldview. Chinese silk is famous for its intricately woven designs called brocade. In order to experience this production process, we came to a local silk factory with a history of more than a hundred years. Making a brocade is a very intricate and complicated process. 
first, we need a good design. According to the design sample, the craftsman draws the concept map. That is, the actual enlarged effect map of the fabric. He has been doing this for 40 years. It's very difficult work. Your eyes, feet, and hands must be coordinated at all times. We program different colors into each jacquard card. From top to bottom, there are thousands of them. Is it this way or is it this way? The process of pattern plate rolling is almost the same as the process of running a computer program. Color information is encoded in the jacquard pattern plates. A program often requires thousands or tens of thousands of pattern plates, and no mistake can be made. After making the jacquard board, it is time for the brocade weaving. Master Hu, who operated the loom, introduced the whole process to us. This is called a jacquard card. We just had someone show us how to punch it out. After we punch them out, we arrange them in order. So, you have these threads here. The warp. These are, yeah, this is called the warp in English. It's called Jingxian in Chinese. Jingxian. Yeah. And Jingdu is longitude. Ah, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because this is supposed to be, you're supposed to think of this kind of like vertical, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. And, and so this is called the weft <laughs> yeah. in English. It's called the weixian. Weixian. Weixian in uh, Chinese. And it's interesting, the Chinese characters. For the Jing, it's actually like a picture. The ancient character is a picture of like lines going up and down. And at the bottom, you have something like this, a uh, gong. Really? Yeah. Okay. And the way is the ancient character is a picture of a foot going to the left and a foot going to the right. And that indicates the shuttle, which goes to the left, right, left, right. Yeah. And way do is the degree of way. The traditional production methods that remain in this factory to this day show the ingenuity of Chinese people at every step. Thousands of warp threads are pulled up and down by the heddles, and dozens of knot threads are arranged in an orderly manner by the pattern memory device. The master lifts and pulls different warp threads, flexing and stretching in order to produce a beautiful pattern. It is as if we have returned to the past. Clothing is just the surface of a person. But behind the clothes, we see a history, wisdom, and technology of the ancients, and feel the changes over time. Through clothes, we see a wider world. We came to Daliang Mountain. Pusheng is a small town. Most of the residents here are the people of the Yi ethnic minority. It is also the starting point of the 5633 train, which takes us to Xicheng City. The whole journey is five hours long. At seven in the morning, it is still dark. But at the station, we meet a lot of fellow villagers who went to the nearby market. They will take the goods on the train to other places to sell. At the station, we bought tickets, and the fare for Adam and I totaled 25 yuan, which is very cheap. 5633-5634 train running between Pusheng Township and Panzhihua City, the whole journey is 376 kilometers, with 26 stops along the way. 
and takes 11 hours and 4 minutes. However, the fares have remained unchanged for over three decades, with the highest costing 25.5 yuan, about $3.9, and the lowest being just 2 yuan. In the station, he met a beautiful woman. She was wearing e-clothing, carrying a full basket of potatoes, cabbage, and other vegetables. She told us she had been riding the train for 20 years, and the operation of this train has made her life easier as she transports her vegetables and poultry to other places to sell. We entered the station together, and it didn't take long for the train to depart. Here we go. The train has an average speed of less than 40 kilometers per hour, but it is a bit different from a regular train. Shan, the character for Mountain. Everybody knows the ancient character for Shan. Uh, the modern character is actually a line on the bottom and three lines going up. And there's a, a poem from uh, Li Bai during the Tang Dynasty. It's Shu Dao Zhi Nan, Nan Yu Shang Qing Tian. It means the Shu Dao. The Shu Dao is a, is a road. It's a set of roads that were made about 2,000 years ago, and they connected Shanxi with Sichuan and a few other places. But the roads were extremely primitive. And some of those roads still exist today, and you can go see them, and you think, geez, how did they ever get down this road? There is a train car dedicated especially to livestock. Everything is set up for the consideration of the villagers. These cute guys, they just look like three heads. <laughs> that guy almost got you. In the train, we saw lots of chickens, ducks, sheep, and people getting into the car. The livestock compartment was very clean, and we interacted with a lamb. Adam and I were both excited because we had never seen a train like this. As the train continued on, more and more passengers got on board. There was a young couple who looked to be in their 20s, ready to go to the city to find work. This young man, named A Jun, and his wife are going out to find work. This time, they are going to Zhejiang or Guangzhou. They usually work in factories and earn about 4,000 to 5,000 renminbi per month. They only get home once a year and most of them go home to reunite with their relatives during the Chinese New Year. There are also many young people like A Jun on this train. They rely on the train to get out of the mountains and go to the big cities to pursue their future. There was also a 75-year-old man who was on the train for free and is about to sell his chickens. This you need a chima? This man has been riding the train since it started operating. He has been riding in this car for more than 50 years. More than 50 years ago, his family's income was only 60 yuan a year. But now it has reached 60,000 yuan. In the past, food was not good and the clothes were not good. Now, life has been turned completely around. <laughs> this woman impressed me the most. She was very energetic. For her, this train was the memory of her family for three generations. This woman has been riding the train with her father since she was a child and went to the nearby town to sell pigs. When she had a child, 
Her child went to school on this string. Her child is now in college, and she is very proud. Uncle Hansa, listen, we've been on the slow train. I realize I don't even know the character for slow. Can you enlighten me? Uh, well, slow and fast, based, they have a heart on the side. So the character for slow is man. Okay, so there's a heart and there's a man. What? No, there's a, a slow man. There's a character pronounced man. That means far away. Right. So the heart far away means it's slow to get there. But you can dissect that uh, character, this character for far away. And you can also get a mom, which is also a phonetic. And that is like a helmet. And that is a cover of the head and a cover a cover of the head and, the, and a cover over the eyes. So slow's got two parts, the heart yeah, and, and the, the phonetic, and the phonetic yeah. which means far. Yeah. Okay, now what about, China's also got these wonderful high-speed trains. How do I say fast? Kwai. Kwai. And then what, yeah. is that, what does that look like? Okay, that also has a heart on the side mm. because when you go fast, your heart is going fast. <laughs> Well, the, on, the, on the side, there's a phonetic called guai. Guai. Now, if we look at that phonetic, if we trace it back, we see a hand and something is on the finger. People believe that it's an archer's ring. And an archer's ring means that you can pull the arrow and it won't hurt your hand. Uh -huh. And so, but the arrow goes fast. Right, right. Yeah, so it's pronounced guai, which is guai. like the character for fast, which is guai. Y and men. Yeah. Why why and why? Yeah. Why and not. This train has changed the lives of many people. Young people pack their bags and go to distant places to find their dreams. Older people regard it as an old friend and it has long become an indispensable part of life. The train conductor, Liu Wei, has long regarded the train as his family. Liu Wei has lived with the train since he was a child, and the sound of the train whistle is like a lullaby at night. When he was a child, he took this train every morning to school. His mother carried potatoes and apples on the train to sell in other villages. Liu Wei has been working on this train for 28 years. The train has become his second home. When I asked Liu Wei what had changed in the past 28 years, Liu Wei told us back then, E folks on the slow train were relatively poor. But now look at these E people and their clothes, their smiles, and the satisfaction they feel when they get on the train you can feel a big change in their life. Also, in the past, it had very few students on the slow train. Now it's different. Now this slow train can carry up to 600 students on holidays, Sundays and Fridays. This is called the slow train, not because it cannot go fast. It is because they need to stop to attend to the villagers at each station. I have your respect for what you do, so thank you for keeping us safe and getting us here promptly. <laughs> Among the deep valleys and ridges, we pass through countless tunnels and finally arrive at Samalada Station which is the highest point on the line. We're at the highest point on the uh, railway here, and they made it about 50 years ago, and 136 people died making the tunnel. Those were rough times. But like, uh, you've got to imagine being at, you have to get to this mountain, then you have to participate in this 
engineering marvel, yes. drilling into a mountain for six kilometers. What sacrifice and bravery. We passed through the 6,379 meter long Samalata tunnel. It took eight years to build. Beside the train tracks, tombstones were built for the victims who died building the tunnels and tracks. And every time the train passes, there will be a sadness in memory of them. Time passed quickly and we reached our destination near noon. Car seven. Hey, Jen. Bye. Jen. Good luck. You will. Bye bye, conductor. Oh, bye. Good. Bye bye. Bye bye, chickens. The journey was full of warmth. We made many friends and felt like we were alive. There are nearly a hundred such trains in other parts of China. The slow train is very nice in this fast-paced world. Finally, let's end this journey with an E song. The lyrics of the song are Friends from afar, we don't see each other often. The finest wine to toast our friends, please have a drink. On the day when the sun and the moon meet, drink up. On the day when winter and spring meet, cheers. In order to feel the enthusiasm of the Chinese people for ice and snow sports, my partner Adam and I came to Jining province in northern China with the mascot Bing Dun Dun to prepare for the sports competition. So I guess we're gonna have a competition. Somebody says you can ski. Yeah, yeah, I said it. You said it. <laughs> You'll see, and we have a witness too. So there'll yeah. be no disputing. Okay, yeah, I skied once. Good, I'm good, hey, how'd it go? In the first round, we had a ski race. Uncle Hansa, we're going snow skiing today. We're hitting the slopes. Do you know what's required for snow skiing? Snow. Snow, that's right. Now, this is the thing, I know how to snow ski, but I don't know how to say snow, okay. nor how to write the character. Can you tell me? It's pronounced shia, and in the ancient shia. character, it had a symbol for sky with feathers coming down. Uh, the feathers look like snow, uh, but as the character progressed, the feathers turned into brooms because you could uh, sweep the snow away. And the modern character, it has a rain character on top, something coming down from the sky, and a hand on the bottom which the hand is something that can sweep the snow away. So it's logical. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go. Adam completely defeated me in this area. He is a master skier. He swoops down from the high track. He is many times better than me in terms of speed and action. Of course, this is my first time on skis. The second round, skating. Because skating on an ice pond in sub-zero weather and soft ankle skates is not like skating on an ice rink. We can't master the balance when skating and it is easy to fall down. So we leaned on some plastic supports. Even with its assistance, I still lost to Adam. Round three, cycling on ice. In this race, we need to ride an ice bike on the ice and go around the ice and see who gets to the finish line first. 
which is easy for me, but it was hard for Adam to control his bike. So it was a lot slower. And in this round, I was victorious. Hey Adam, how you doing? Ah, all right, it's finish line. Hansa? We're tied. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Hansa, what, what is this game? Well, this is Ga. Has a small on the top, a big in the middle, and a small on the bottom. It's pronounced Ga. Okay, and ga. this is the game of Ga. It's like a top, but with a whip. Yeah. Like a dreidel or something. Ouch! Crack that whip! Dun dun dun! Take that! Ga! The fourth round of the competition, ice top whipping, which is a folk sport in the Northeast. It is necessary to use a rope to whip a wooden top and keep it spinning continuously. Whoever spins longer will win. In this round, I won. Adam was completely inexperienced, chasing the top and falling on the ice. In the end, we were actually tied, but the final award was decided to go to me, encouraging me to keep going and get stronger. Uncle Hansa, let me be the first to congratulate you on your victory, as you are the winner of the 2022 Bing Dun Dun. Bing Dun Dun, oh, oh. Bing Dun Dun. Let it go, let it go, and I rise like the break of dawn. Here I stand. In the park, the ice is carved into various shapes related to the themes of the Winter Olympics. Under the sun, the ice surface is crystal clear. Each piece looks like glass. I almost forget it is 20 degrees below zero centigrade. Uncle Hansa, this place is beautiful. And it's all made of ice. It's like a, a city of ice and with beautiful architecture. Now, I know Bing Kwar means ice, but I honestly don't know the character. Can you explain the, uh, well, the Chinese the character? The ancient character for Bing uh, looks like two upside down Vs. And uh, people say it looks like the ice crystals. Ah, okay. And like we icicle. have many modern characters. It looks like a dot and a line. And if you see that on the side, it usually means something cold. Hey, well, do you know how to make this? I mean, how do they build this? Uh, well, I don't know how to make it, but we'll go see a teacher who does know how to make it, and uh, he can explain it. All right. Ice from the river is cut into large cubes and brought back to the city. Then it is hacked into basic shapes, then carved with a file, chopped with a hook, and finally ground with a fine knife. The formation of a piece of work requires the carving master to spend a lot of energy. Uh, He's making an axe. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. We asked a local master to teach us how to make a sculpture. After getting the ice block, we first use a marker to draw the outline on the ice. Then we use different types of knives to carve the ice into the desired shape. Generally, the serrations are relatively large. The large tool will be used for the shaving operation. Then, the, when the general shape is obtained, a different tool will be used for fine carving. Adam and I have both tried it out. I was scared I would cut too deep and break the entire piece of ice. One must be very careful, and it is a real test of skills. At night, the colorful lights light up the ice sculptures. Then, there are fireworks. It makes for a fantastic scene. Adam and I tell our wishes for 2022. Hey, so Adam, what are your hopes for 2022? Well, mine are kind of personal. I just want to hold my parents again. I haven't hugged them in two years. And I want them to meet my son, who's uh, yeah. just turning two. Yeah. Uh, and I need to lose some weight. <laughs> I want to lose this pandemic weight. Yeah, well, I need to lose some weight too. And I hope to uh, finish explanations of several thousand Chinese characters. Well, I tell you, I, I really appreciate everything you've done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Uncle Hansa. 
Well, I'm glad I had the opportunity to teach you a few characters. Yeah. Keep on learning. I really learned a lot. I'll see you next time. Okay, we'll see you next time. Whoa.